Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, and today we're taking a look at Temperance Island. Once you get to Temperance Island, you're going to have to travel across this sheet of ice, and you will need to make sure you're using your sprint key, as if not, you're just not going to make any progress. A couple things to note while we're traveling is make sure you have a spear and maybe some bow and arrows, as this will help you take out the polar bears and angler fish that are on the island. It's also worth having your oxygen bottle as there is one small area with some angler fish in that you'll need to fight and there's no air pockets there so it'll make it a little easier for you. And then make sure you have plenty of food and water. So once you're on the island we are looking to get up to the snow areas instead of on the ice sheets and it really doesn't matter where you land on the island. Our first goal is going to be looking for the observatory and we'll show you where that is in just a minute. On the island, there is a ton of these areas that have this uh, snowmobile in it, and this can be used to travel around to make things a little easier for you. Uh, I won't be using these in the guide as it makes it difficult to show you where everything is at, but it is something that can be worth it for you. So from here, we are going to head down the path and look for the observatory. The island's a giant ring, so as long as you continue around the outside ring, you'll end up near the observatory. So we'll be back in just a minute once we get there. All right, so this is our first stop and it's at the observatory here and you're looking for this fenced in area as well as the giant building in front of us and you're going to want to continue across this path and as soon as you walk in it, the ice will break apart and toss you down in a tunnel. This is where it can be really helpful to have your oxygen bottle as well as a headlight as so I'll equip these now just to make sure everything goes smoothly. So we're going to head into the water and there are two angler fish in this area. So when you get here, you can either choose to swim past them and take a little bit of damage or you can fight them, but you really don't need to take them out if you don't want to. So continue swimming as there's no air pockets here. If you need to go back or forward to, re to refresh your air, you can do that. But as you can see, I only took two hits to get through the water, even without fighting the angler fish. So from here, we're gonna continue forward until we find a ladder. Take the ladder upstairs to the observatory and we're on the ground floor now. A couple things here is there are four of these notes that are around here and this is used to solve a puzzle if you don't want me to tell you the code, but you can go ahead and pick up the four notes. One is here on the first floor. The next one's on the table on the second floor and we're just continuing up the stairs. Our third note is on the pillar here. And our last note is actually up the ladder up top here and around the corner is the fourth note. Our next section is using this console here in reference to the four pictures that we picked up. Each of those pictures references a specific constellation, and when you find the constellation you're looking for, you need to count the number of stars in that constellation, and that will give you a number which correlates to a four-digit code to the safe. So I'll give you just a few seconds here before I enter the code myself. And once you have the code, the code is 5964 and that will allow you to open the safe, which will allow you to pick up the Selene key, as well as the blueprint for the advanced stationary anchor. Once we have the blueprint, we're gonna head back downstairs. Downstairs, we're using the door to exit outside. Once we're outside, our next section is going to be heading towards the Igloo Village. And to do this, we do need to pick up a few things on the way. So head on outside the observatory gate. Make sure you don't fall in the hole. And the first thing we need to do is pick up electrical wires from these radio towers. 
You will need a total of 11 of these electrical wires and each radio tower will give you two electrical cables. From here we want to turn around and head back down the path we came and we're following this path that looks like tracks in the snow. So here is our second tower and we're going to pick up two more cables here. Be careful of the polar bears out there. With your metal spear, it takes about 10 hits to kill these things. Um, but each of these towers will have a polar bear around it, so just be careful. Once your polar bear is taken care of, continue on down your path. Here is our third tower, and we do have another polar bear to take out. And once the polar bear is taken out, let's pick up our third radio tower for a total of six electrical cables now. Then continue back down the path. Here we are at our fourth tower and another polar bear. And once the polar bear is taken care of, let's pick up our next radio tower. This is tower number four for a total of eight electrical cables now. After this, continue following the path. So this is the location of the Igloo Village, but we do need to pick up one more tower before we head in there. So head towards the right, and we're going to the tower in the distance that we can see there. Here's another polar bear at the tower. And with your polar bear dead, we can pick up the fifth radio tower for a total of 10 electrical cables. and then head back towards the Igloo Village. Once you're at the Igloo Village, your last electrical cables come from the tower just inside the village, and this will give you a total of 12 electrical cables, which will allow you to complete your next section. At this point, we need to use our electrical cables to power up this town, and to do that, you need to find this area to start dragging your cables, interact with it, and then head up the path here towards this electrical box and that will allow you to stop dragging the cable and connect everything. Your next one is going to be start from here and that will give you your line and now jump up a few rocks to connect it to this box here. Our next one is on this building here so we can connect it to the power pole outside this will open up the door when you connect it to an igloo house itself, and there are some loot crates inside. But we're going to continue on, so we're going to grab our cable and continue down towards the next igloo here. And connect it to this one. Our next box is on the next igloo here. After this, we're going to start dragging the cable one more time and go across this bridge here. Our next one's a little bit tricky as we do need to jump across these gaps. Jump up on top of the rocks and this will allow you to connect another power pole. From here, start dragging your cable again and head down towards this igloo with the electrical box outside. Our next one is a short drag and it's up on top of the rocks here. From there, start dragging your next cable down towards the igloo here. And we have one last cable to connect and that will be towards the box outside of the big dome in the middle. So that should be your electrical wire path and from here we can head inside the main igloo. 
So head inside and there is a few pieces of loot all around, but our main goal is to head upstairs. And we're looking for the blowtorch on the table as well as the blueprint for the advanced biofuel refiner. After this, we're heading back outside. Once you're outside, we're heading towards where those green lights in the sky are. And the easiest way to do this is actually to follow the snow tracks in. All right, so we're at the Selene Research Facility now, and I will be back in just a second when it's daylight outside so we can see everything. All right, so our next step is to actually use our blowtorch on the key pad here. And then use your Selene key, and that will open up the giant door here. Once you're inside, we're looking for the main console and it tells us that we need control rods. So there are three control rods here and to access those, we need to head into laboratory two. However, it is radioactive, so we need to use a hazmat suit. This hazmat suit only lasts for a few minutes, so pay attention to the duration on your bar and head downstairs. Once you're in here, you're at our first puzzle inside the facility, and this is finding the chemical elements in correlation to their number on the wall. So for RB, and then inside each of these two rooms, there's also another control panel for CL, and one more for PM. So I am gonna just enter the codes here. Uh, if you want to find them yourself, you can skip this section. So the three codes are timed, so you do need to have these already written down and ready to use. So for PM, we want to use 6-1, and we have about 30 seconds to go to the next consoles. For CL, it is 17. And for RB, it is 37. Once all three numbers are put in, it'll open the door and will allow you to continue on the path. This area is safe, so if your hazmat suit runs out, it's okay. From here, continue and take a left, and we're grabbing our first control rod. After that, continue through the door. Here's our next access point, and it is radioactive down at the bottom, so we'll need to use our hazmat suit behind us. Grab your hazmat suit and head down the ladder. Continue straight forward on the path until you find this control valve here. When you open this control valve, it is gonna start summoning bugs. So go ahead and take these out. It just takes a few hits with your spear to take each bug out. So once you have the four bugs taken out, you can rotate this a little easier. And that will allow you to go up the next stairs into the next area. From here, continue on forward and grab your next control rod. After this, go through the next door and this is a laser puzzle for us. So we want to activate the laser on the wall. And the goal here is to use the mirrors to burn the control panel that's over there. These lasers do damage you, so be careful of running through them although it is pretty minor. Use this lever here to redirect the laser to be able to line it up with the control panel on the wall. And that will break it open and we can continue on to the next section.
For the next section, we're using the hazmat suit again, and this will allow us to open the door here. I've already set this up. The laser is turned on using this panel here on the wall, and that will start your laser puzzle. The goal is to have the lasers point into this control box here to open the next door. So to do this, we need to start with this first panel here and rotate it so it shines at the mirror across over there. These lasers do do damage, so be careful there. Your next mirror should point the laser onto the panel on the right, and that will allow your laser to follow across the room into another mirror. This mirror will shine it onto this box, which will allow us to rotate it to point it at the third mirror or fourth mirror that we can rotate. And then we want to rotate this one to point to the mirror on the wall, and that will allow us to burn the control box. After that, we are in the last room here and we can pick up our control rod and head back upstairs. Once we're upstairs, we need to feed the control rods into these three boxes. And then go interact with the main console. This will start another sequence of events and we need to pick up the reactor key and head into the reactor. Our next section is another hazmat area and you may have to come out and equip your hazmat suit multiple times for this section. So grab your suit and head inside. And your goal here is to take out the bugs that are around you and then interact with these control rods. These do save your progress. So as long as you're rotating these, it does summon more bugs around you but I would just continue as much as you can until the bugs get near you and then take them out. There are three of these valves that we have to take care of and each of them will follow the same pattern that as you're rotating it, it will start summoning bugs. two down and we do have a bug I recommend standing here in the back corner and finding the way that you can rotate it as this will limit the range of the aggro on the bugs and you may be able to complete this without any bugs attacking you so once all three of those are taken care of it will disperse all of the gas and you'll be able to continue on with the story at this point we don't need our hazmat suit our goal is to head inside the big door and into the ice caverns here open the door and continue straight forward there's a blueprint for the electric smelter here as well as the coordinates for utopia the last thing to mention in this room is there is another character for you to use by interacting with this panel and Shogo will fall out here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this type of content and a huge shout out to our Patreon members that support the work we do. Thank you from all of us here at Nocturne Gaming. If you would like to become a patron and get some added benefits, check out the link in the description. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below for me and we'll see you next time.